لأجاريهم قلت ظاهر ما فيهم فبدوت شخصا آخر كي أتفاخر Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today's video is on how to balance deen and dunya and how to stay consistent in general. Like always, I have some notes down, some bullet points, and this time I have them on my phone. And yeah, just like a general idea of things I want to cover. But yes, get comfortable, get cozy. I don't have any drink today because I'm about to head to the gym. So if you have been conflicted or you just don't know how to balance your deen and your dunya a lot of times it's because you see those things as two separate things from each other but we should look at them as one let me explain when you make the reason why you do your dunya things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it becomes for your deen it becomes for your religion as well it becomes an act of worship did you know that studying is an act of worship because some people consider going to school and getting a job as a dunya thing. But it's not a dunya thing if you make your intention that it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you work, you go to work and you're providing money. And that money is for your family. Or maybe you donate that money, a portion of it. Or you spend it on food. You buy gifts for the people you love. And you say, Ya Allah, I'm doing this for your sake. It becomes an act of worship when you go to sleep at night. If you say, Ya Allah, I'm going to sleep so that I could wake up and pray Fajr, so that I could worship you better. I have, I'm resting so I could worship you better. I'm feeding myself so I could worship you better, so that uh, I take care of the body, the amana the, that you entrusted with me, the thing that you entrusted with me, which is this body. It becomes an act of worship. So first of all, change your mindset around that. Do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your job for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make everything that you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm spending money on clothing that is modest, I'm getting good deeds for that. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. If you struggle waking up for Fajr, if you struggle with anything, ask Allah to purify your intentions. That is something, especially if you do something in like deen related, if you run a halaqa, if you're constantly volunteering at the masjid. I used to post a lot of dawah, TikTok videos and stuff and I, you know, run halaqas at my masjid. So I always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify my intention because what happens sometimes is you're, you're, you'll start to get all these compliments and everybody's pleased with you and, you know, subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, he will put the love he will put love in other people's hearts for you but still you have to make sure that you are not straying away from that path that it's not becoming because you're getting all these compliments because that feeling is rewarding which is normal when somebody compliments you you feel good about it you naturally want more but make sure you're always asking Allah to purify your intentions and make what you do solely for his sake make sure that you are centering your life around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Everything that you do is for Allah. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. But how can you balance a schedule? How can you balance so many things? I actually get asked this question so many times. And let me tell you guys, I am a productive person. And I love being productive. But I'm not always like this. And nobody is productive all year round. There are some weeks where things come up. Where, like when I came back from my Morocco trip, I was jet lagged. I couldn't function as I normally would have if I wasn't jet lagged. Sometimes I'm on my menstrual cycle and it's harder for me to get up early, like you need more sleep, you need more rest. So you have to listen to your body and being okay that not every day is going to look the same. Not every cycle of your life is going to look the same. There are certain times where you, you just you have so much time that you can dedicate to memorizing Quran, to reading Quran, to stuff like that and there's other times in your life where you are so busy that you have time for two pages a day and don't minimize that don't minimize that two page whatever of quran a day or memorization or you only have time to listen to a 10 minute lecture instead of an hour lecture but be okay with that like give yourself grace as long as you're trying your best you're putting your best foot forward 
then give yourself grace. Even if you're not happy with how far you're progressing, be graceful with yourself. I was really hard on myself about a year ago for not being, not having as much time to dedicate to the Dean as I used to when I was younger, um, which was the year prior. <laughs> but I remember and I was talking to a scholar, a female scholar, and I was telling her and I, I remember I cried and I was like telling her how like upset, upset I was with myself. And she was like telling me, you're not, your whole life isn't going to look like this. Like at some point, you know, you're going to have kids, you're going to be busier. But then when these kids grow up, you're going to have a lot of time. And all of a sudden you have so much time to do all these things. So every cycle of your life is going to look different. And as long as you're trying your absolute best, then it's fine. But yes, I'm not productive like that every single day. I do my best, but sometimes things happen outside of our control, like getting sick or just not feeling well, feeling under the weather, or just feeling sad, or uh, things will happen outside of our control that will affect our emotions and not allow us to be as productive as we normally are. And that's okay, that's just how life is. But make sure you never get to the point where you're like, well, as long as I didn't start my day right, my whole day is ruined and I'm not gonna do anything. Or as long as I'm, I can't do everything, so I'm not gonna do anything. Do the best you can, do the most you can, and that's it. Here are some tips on how you can kind of organize your schedule that I use. First of all, plan your schedule on Sundays for the next week. I use this planner that has like where I would just plan my week, have a quote, a big to-do, like something that is very important that I want to complete. And on Sunday, I will plan every single day of my week. So I don't miss anything, so I get everything done and everything is on schedule and I'm not behind. Instead of making a to-do list at the beginning of each day, because by then it's like putting a band-aid on an open wound, it's too late. You can't like, you can only do that for so much, it's gonna be so hard for you. And like, let's say I open, I'm making a to-do list for today and I find out I had like three assignments due today. I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them if they're all big assignments. So it's best to plan out, not get too stressed about that kind of stuff and just have it all planned out. I also plan my year. <laughs> Sounds a little bit insane, but I plan the year ahead. I always have like a rough plan of the next five years, like where I see myself. It's more solidified, of course, in the next two years and then or in the next year Then I know it's more solidified of like, this is what I'm planning to do. This is like what I envision for myself. This is what I envision studying, etc. But I have like the next year planned and I have goals for each month. So kind of like, it's not like by day, I'm not like crazy. But like, it's not by each day of the year, but like, for example, by like uh, January, make sure you sign up for graduation. By this, make sure it's like this, you're graduating in June, inshallah, stuff like that. So like a rough plan of the year. And at the beginning of each term for college, I make a Google sheet, I put in all my assignments. I put in all the due dates and I make them do one day ahead so that I just, just to be safe, I like to turn in my assignments at least five days early. So just to be safe, I will do it as early as possible, but just in case I'm close to that deadline, that deadline is actually a day ahead. So that's what I like doing and that way I never miss an assignment, I never miss um, anything and it's done on time and plus I have extra time just in case. Like I miss something just in case I want to add something or something comes up. So I do those kind of things to kind of control that. Plan your week by Sunday. Your success for the week starts Sunday. And your day starts the night before. <laughs> your day starts the night before. So for me, if I journal and then I go to bed at 9 and then I wake up at 5 a.m. Then I'm like... I set myself up for success because I got the sleep that I needed and now I'm ready for that day. Versus if I go to bed at like 1 a.m., wake up at 5, I have 4 hours of sleep. I'm already on a bad foot, so then I'm like tired, I'm like don't want to go to work, don't want to be productive, don't want to do anything, just want to sleep, just want to rest. You set yourself up for, for failure by doing that. So set yourself up for success, the day starts at night. For me, I actually, so I have my to-do list for the week that has the main things and then I have small things like check your email, um, send this person this such and such, so it's like the more like minor details that I will 
put on its separate to-do list that I will have next to that one and basically that one will have like the 10 things I need to get done for the day and that one is in much more detail like send this exact email etc and that one is I write that one the night before never do it the day of unless like you really have to I write that the night before then I go I you know read Surat al-Mulk do my skincare, brush my wash my face, brush my teeth, do my skincare, journal, take a deep breath, read a book, go to sleep, wake up, uh, pray, read Quran, start my day slow. I give myself two hours in the morning to eat breakfast, start slow, no caffeine until 90 minutes after I wake up so that you don't want to stress your body out as soon as you wake up and I just wake up slowly and it's quiet at that time because everybody's asleep in my house I set myself up for success by taking that time to slowly wake up so by the time it's 7 a.m. I'm ready to start work I'm like all ready and I'm in front of my laptop my computer and I'm like ready to do all the assignments I need to do Another tip is before going to bed, make the intention of waking up to pray Fajr. Something else is the Prophet ﷺ made dua for us so that we could have the most barakah of time, the most blessings in our time in the morning time, so after Fajr. So that's why I love waking up to pray and I feel like when I wake up at 5 a.m. I feel like I have 48 hours in my day versus when I wake up at like 9 a.m. I feel like the day is already over. At least for me, I feel like it's already over because I still need the two hours to wake up. I still need to do all these things and then it's just like I'm under so much stress and it's bad for your long-term health and all these things and then you're in a bad mood and all these things, you know? So that's why it's like important to set your day around the prayers. Schedule your day around the prayers. For example, like, you know, waking up time is around Fajr. Going to bedtime is after Aisha. Sometimes you have to delay it a little bit because especially as winter is going in, it's going to be like at 6 p.m. Uh, don't sleep at 6 p.m. <laughs> Unless you want to. Then wake up at 3 a.m. maybe. Um, but I like to have my schedule that I sleep after Aisha, wake up at Fajr, pray, like waking up before Fajr, and then praying and doing all these things. But... It's so important how you start and how you end your day. And it's very important not to start and end your day on social media, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. If you start your day with scrolling on social media, that's what your brain is going to become addicted to and it's going to look for it throughout the day. You're going to want to scroll and scroll and scroll throughout the day. One tip that I have if you struggle with not holding onto your phone before bed or when you first wake up is turning off your phone so I would completely shut off my phone for two hours before I sleep two hours before I go to bed so it would be 7 p.m. I would turn it off completely and just the next time I open it is at 7 a.m. because I wake up at 5 so I give myself two hours and then 7 a.m. is when I will open it again and I will do what I need to do maybe go on social media but not don't let it be the first thing that you open the best thing you can do is start your day with Quran and end your day with Quran because then that's what you're going to long for and let me tell you guys when you start your day with Quran and you end it with Quran the peace that you get and the, like, the comfort the contentment that you get like I just I don't know how to explain it you just you're in peace and also plan your day around the prayer so for example you wake up at Fajr and then for me, the hard time is around lunchtime, so I will, it's right at the end of lunchtime, so I'll eat my lunch and then I'll go pray. By the time it's Asr time, I'm usually home, but now that it's getting earlier and earlier, I might have to pray at work and then go home. Before I go to the gym, I will pray Maghrib if it, the time shifts. So set your day around the prayers. Make sure that you don't miss any prayer. And do your best to get up to pray as soon as you hear the Adhan, you get up and you pray. Whatever you delay your prayer for will not have any blessings in it. Before, I used to be like, okay, just I'll finish this homework assignment, then I'll get up and pray. The homework assignment was supposed to take me like 20 minutes. It took me like two hours. Because there is no barakah in it. Because I put it as a priority over my meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to talk to me. 
And I said, hold on, let me finish this useless homework that I have to do. So everything can wait. Everything can wait. The only time that I personally would might not pray it as soon as I hear the adhan, I still pray it within the time bracket, but not as soon as I hear the adhan, is if I'm in the middle of doing like a blood draw for a patient or doing a skin test or I'm with a patient, then I can't just be like, oh, I'm going to come back, you know? Um, so I finish up and then as soon as I'm done, before I move on to any other person, I will say, hey, I need like five minutes and I'll be back. And they're usually really flexible with that kind of stuff. The other thing is if you're eating and the adhan comes on, you finish your food, then you get up and pray. It's so important to take care of your health and yourself because if you want to be super productive, if you want to do all these things, you have to be well rested and you have to be well fed and nourished. So nourish your body by working out, going to the gym, taking walks, eating well, nourish your mental health by being out in nature, by journaling, by doing things like starting your morning slowly and ending your night slowly, peacefully so you're well rested and you're taking care of your mental health and nourish your soul with the remembrance of Allah, with prayer, with dua, with dhikr, with Quran and that's how you have a full circle and you have to realize discipline and being able to accomplish so much is not built overnight you have to be working on it and you have to start small and increase for example if you want to read a chapter of the Quran each day you have to start with maybe half a page and then 10 days later if you notice half a page is easy for you then maybe add a full page and slowly you add on but you don't add on too much in the beginning because what happens is you get overwhelmed and then you end up quitting so you have to build it over time you also naturally build stamina and when it comes to ibadat like reading the quran praying sunnah prayers which are the extra prayers um doing more dhikr doing all these things you naturally you will naturally be inclined to do more and more and more that's just how it is because you find so much peace in it that you start craving it that you start wanting it but remember rest is so important before i used to force myself to sit for the 12 hours and i told myself i'm not getting up unless i'm done but what was happening is i would sit for eight hours straight and do like barely accomplish anything like accomplish things that i could have accomplished in one hour in eight hours and it would be such a waste and I was miserable and then the next day I was even more miserable and I didn't want to do it even more so it's important when you notice these things about yourself to give yourself a break take that rest because in those eight hours you could have rested you could have recharged and then you come back and you'll get all these done in an hour so knowing your limit and when it's time to say I'm gonna take a break but also not abusing that because if you're constantly giving yourself that oh you're tired let's rest today you're tired let's do this today you don't have to study don't abuse that you know only use it when you genuinely need that break but always push yourself always do your absolute best so make sure you're dedicating times in your day to breathe and prayer helps so much when i'm at work and i'm running in the emergency room from one corner to the next from one building to the next and then it hits the hard time the second prayer of the day i go make wudu and then i pray and wallahi it's the most peaceful thing ever to be like running around and then all of a sudden i'm like because <sighs> i don't rush it i'm like it's okay like take the five minutes Take your time and pray. It gives me so much peace and comfort. And it helps with my stress levels. So we have something that is built into our schedule by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that teaches us that. That teaches us it's like you need to breathe. There are so many studies on how helpful meditation is for yourself, for your body, for your mind. And Allah gave that to us. 
another thing that's so important is keep the promises that you make to yourself if you said i'm gonna finish this today finish it today if you said i'm not gonna get on my phone after this time do that if you said i'm gonna go to bed at this time do that okay you have to keep the promises you make to yourself because if you don't you lose respect for yourself and stick to your word you made that promise with yourself stick to it and if you're not ask yourself why what's happening what's preventing me from this and whenever you get those days where you're just feeling down remember why you're doing this i'm currently studying so that's like the number one thing for me it's like i don't know where you guys are at in your life i'm studying and working at the same time volunteering at, at the message which is like a full-time job on its own <laughs> but remember why you started doing this whether you're tired at work whether you're tired from school whether you're tired from volunteering remind yourself of your purpose and why you began why are you doing this and if you constantly feel like you have to ask yourself that or you constantly get to that place then and if you're getting paid then ask yourself if i wasn't getting paid would i be doing this and if the answer is yes then continue then remind yourself why is it a yes and if the answer is no and it's your job then look into other things don't quit look into other things see ways that you can make it something that you enjoy that you want to do next i have some tips on how to be consistent before I get into that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us consistency and the importance of it through our prayers. We pray five times a day. To pray five times a day, it takes discipline. It takes consistency to get used to that schedule. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that through prayer. He doesn't say just pray at the beginning of the day and you're done. Pray at the end of the day and you're done. It's five times and short prayers. So you start small. Tip number one, if you really want to do it, then commit to it. Ask yourself, why do you want to do this thing? Why do you want to be consistent with reading the Quran every day? Why do you want to be consistent with studying for one hour in the morning? Why? And you, you're the only person who has the answer to that question. You have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Because if you're not, if you're, your desire is not to do this thing, you don't want to do this, then it's going to be really hard for you to stay consistent and to be disciplined enough to do it every day. So you have to ask yourself, why? What's the main reason? What's the drive? What's behind this? What's pushing you to this? Number two, focus on one thing at a time. Like I previously said, you have to take that one thing that you start with, like two pages of Qur'an and slowly, slowly but surely add on to it but only once you became comfortable with those two pages. So I'll say I'm consistent with reading two pages for two weeks. I've been reading it every single day. I don't struggle with it. I find it very easy. Then I know it's time to add a third page. But if I was struggling and I add more, I'm going to get overwhelmed and then I'm going to stop. Focus on one task at a time. Small steps go a long way. The most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are small but consistent. So it doesn't have to be reading the Quran. It doesn't have to be prayer. It doesn't have to be dhikr or dua. It doesn't have to be donating your money. It could simply be you're studying and you start by studying one hour each morning, then you do two, then you up it to three. Anything in your life, implement that. Number three, don't complicate it and make it easy for yourself. Make it accessible. Don't make your life harder. Uh, one of my goals was drinking more water. And I realized my water bottle, when it had the other cap, I would have to screw it and unscrew it. And I realized I was like getting lazy about that. So I would drink less water because I didn't want to have to, every time I want to take a sip, I have to unscrew it. So I made it easier for myself. I got a straw so that I can just do this. It's very easy. I don't have to like twist the whole thing and twist it back on. And I can drink from it. And it's super easy. And I actually noticed so much improvement. I'm drinking so much more water. <laughs> but make things easy for yourself. I leave my journal 
right next to my bedside table so that I don't forget and that it's right there I can just grab it I keep the Quran on the lower shelf so I can grab it I make it easier for myself to grab it not harder don't focus on every single little detail focus on the main picture because once you start worrying about those little things and planning every single little thing out then it's just gonna make it harder and harder for you to maintain Four, have realistic goals and expectations of yourself I would sometimes have like the craziest to-do lists for the day and it would be like impossible for me to finish in one day and then I would feel horrible about myself with all the accomplishments I did I would still feel so horrible about myself and not give myself any grace and in turn it was just making everything worse by me constantly criticizing myself and my work ethic when to begin with the goals themselves were not realistic so be realistic with yourself and what is what you can actually accomplish in one day I'm not gonna write a full thesis in one day I know that for a fact so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna set certain sections of it due maybe in a week not even a day and then work towards them but then once you accomplish that one thing then you're gonna feel the reward and the joy of you completing something then you will slowly build up that stamina and also don't compare yourself to others because a lot of our unrealistic goals come from others so if I'm comparing myself to somebody who, like I want to start reading the Qur'an and I'm comparing myself to somebody who reads 10 chapters a day, even if I end up reading my goal of one chapter, I'm going to feel horrible about myself because this other person has 10, so I'm like, so I should be able to do 10. But it takes time, it takes progress, it takes work, it takes hard work, it takes discipline, it's so much more than just you get it done. It does not build overnight. Your stamina, your discipline, consistency, it's not overnight. Number five, prioritize progress over perfection. As long as you are doing those one small task each day and you're completing them and you're seeing improvement in one way or another, pat yourself on the back. That's good enough. You don't have to be at that perfection level. The small steps is what matters. That's how you become consistent. Nobody improves overnight. You need that time to build. But for you to do that, you have to have grace with yourself. You have to love yourself enough to excuse certain things and allow certain things to pass by because that's just how it is. Learn to say, you know, I'm not happy that I didn't finish this task yesterday, but what can I do now about it? What can you do? Nothing. The only thing you can do is improve today is improve what you're going to do today not everything is going to happen exactly as you expect it it's not going to be perfect but as long as you're making any progress that's amazing okay this is the last one and it's a big one number six is learning to say no this is something i still struggle with personally but if you're trying to accomplish something and you constantly add tasks to yourself that you don't need and that you don't really want to do then it's important to learn to say no so that you're not filling up your time with things that are unnecessary. You have to set your priorities straight and if that task is not your priority, then don't say yes to it. Because once you say yes, now you have another thing on your list that's going to stop you from being consistent with whatever that you wanted to do originally. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And stop making promises that you cannot keep. Honestly, this is directed towards me, myself, right now. Because I constantly say yes to things. And then I end up committing. And then it's like, it gets so overwhelming. Because I really don't have time for that. And I should be focusing on other things. But stop making promises to other people and to yourself that you cannot keep. If you know that you can't put your best foot forward on this task, then don't say yes. That is all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope it was helpful. I know a lot of you guys were asking about it, so I really hope it was beneficial, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I love you guys so, so, so much. And I am so happy whenever I read your guys' comments, your reflections. I love hearing your perspective and what you have to say and your experiences. But... Inshallah, we are improving and we are growing together. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. And assalamu alaikum.